As a Ford GT owner, I'd just like to share with you a few tips on what it's like to live with your Ford GT. I mean, this is the most purpose-built car you can buy. It's a surgical instrument for the road, if you will. And it's great that all this form has function, but there's also a couple of things you need to be aware of. Let me give you an example. As we talk about the aerodynamics of the 4GT, which are absolutely spectacular. I mean, you talk about the legacy improving on itself. This car now generates 250 pounds of downforce at speed. Trust me, from the originals, that's a big enhancement. To do that, some very interesting aerodynamic tricks, like these rear diffusers, all part of the ground effects package. Well, you back up too close to a curb, <laughs> They're going to get a lot shorter, so remember they're back there because they are part of this very purpose-built automobile. I love these scoops, which by the way, in terms of racing history, were always evolving. You look at photos of these cars back in the 60s, and it seemed like every race these things were changing in configuration. I know this aerodynamic team worked very hard on this. Talk about some of that downforce. You've got side splitters, part of that aerodynamic package. Remember, when air goes underneath the car, we want it to stay there. We just want it to move very, very rapidly. So these side skirts, which now have a splitter, i.e. a horizontal plane, are very close to the ground. It wouldn't take much to high center these in the wrong kind of driveway approach. Ah, and talking about driveway approaches, as aggressive and as effective as this front spoiler and splitter is, note how low to the ground it would be. You want to be very, very careful on steep approach angles to driveways and different entrances to parking lots. It's a lovely piece. It's a lot lovelier if it stays attached to the front of the car. Hey, let me show you some tips underneath the engine cover. Now, obviously, one of the biggest joys of living with a Ford GT resides right here. And through the magic of television, we've removed the rear engine cover. I really wanted you to have the opportunity to get a very unique look at what's clearly a piece of art. Now, you know this is a 5.4 liter all aluminum V8 engine. It produces 550 horsepower. It's just an amazing number to me. And 500 foot-pounds of torque. But what is key about this engine, and I'll go inside in just a second, is the drivability. Look, if you've test driven any kind of exotic cars, you know they're generally very peaky, extraordinarily difficult to drive in traffic. That is so opposite the case here. 80% of this engine's torque, 500 foot-pounds, 80% of that available by 2,000 RPM. That's what makes this vehicle so pleasant to drive around town. Now, when you go to the racetrack, it's prepared to go to work, but when you live with it on a day-to-day -day basis, it's that drivability that makes it so wonderful. So what's so special about this all-aluminum V8 with aluminum cylinder heads, aluminum intake manifold? Well, first of all, it's known as a deep skirt block, so it's strong. It's got cross-bolted mains in it, so a lot of strength paid to stabilizing that crankshaft and the bottom end when you're making that kind of horsepower. It's got a forged steel crankshaft. Again, you're starting to recognize some big block technologies, are you not? H-beam connecting rods, all the things they've learned about making big power in engines, but in a much smarter, more sophisticated way. And I know that offends every big block guy out there, but let's just be honest, these engines today are so modern. Look what we got here with four cams, 32 two valves, this dual red cam motor, it's supercharged, it's intercooled, it's got an air to water intercooler on it. I mean, they really capitalize on virtually every piece of technology that not only enhances the power capability, but frankly, makes it so darn drivable. Now, how do you protect this investment? How do you take care of an engine that makes that kind of power? Well, you want to go dry sump. If you think about it, virtually every race car you've ever heard of runs a dry sump oil system. It pays a lot of benefits. It means the crankshaft's not whipping through the oil. It means we can lower the car and lower the engine. That reduces the, the roll height of the, of the center of gravity in the vehicle. So we get all of that down. So we can't have that big, deep oil pan anymore. Oil pan is now flat, and we put three gallons of oil in that reservoir over there. Now, where these engines are assembled, frankly, is as special as a motor. It's a designated and highly specialized assembly line, strictly for Ford high-performance engines. And frankly, it's right there in Romeo. It's called their niche line. And so specific and so tracked is each engine, it's literally signed by both the technicians who build the engine for the vehicle. Okay, great, so we got great drivability, we've got monstrous horsepower and torque. How are we getting it out here to these black round things? Well, that's done through a Ricardo transaxle. Now, I understand it's not a household name, but if you're a racing enthusiast, you'd certainly recognize it from the Indy Racing League. That's what they're using in the back of those cars. There is a difference, however. This one, in fact, has synchros for each gear change. 
The truth is Indy cars run a straight, uh, straight gear. Uh, it's a whole different technology. It does, however, put an importance on the fact that any technician working on this vehicle, and I realize this is not a case of going to, you know, some aftermarket oil place behind a grocery store, but you know, highly specialized technicians should be aware of the fact that this requires Ricardo gearbox lube. We want to take care of it. With regard to performance, have you any doubt? A first gear that's good to 60 miles an hour. <laughs> Fourth, fifth, and sixth gears are all overdrive. If you actually get it in a sixth gear, please call me. I suspect it'll be one phone call you're allowed from jail because I can't imagine the kind of velocity they would have finally caught you doing. Uh, that's a big, huge number. Yet with all of this capability, all that performance, how big is Ford's confidence? We'll give you an idea. The warranty, three years or 36,000 miles. And even if you go to a racetrack and have some fun with it. Now, I'd watch the word racing, but if you want to go out to track days, which so many of the Ford clubs do across the country, Ford actually encourages you to do it. They feel the car is strong enough. And by the way, as typical with a lot of Ford products, 24-hour roadside assistance the entire time the car is covered in a warranty. So they really do have you covered. <gasps> and speaking of covered, it actually comes with its own Ford GT car cover. So they really have gone the extra mile to make sure well, that you know how special you are. Another key detail. You know, there are a fair number of exotics out there. Of course, none is close to being the value story that this one is. But what's always discouraged me about them is they're not only expensive to buy, frankly, they're an arm and a leg to own as well. That is not the case here. $15 oil filter. Check that on some of your more high-end exotics anytime soon. You'll find the one and the five are correct. You just need to add another zero. It's not about that. And how about parts availability? This is the case of, hey, you know, we're going to FedEx your request to a foreign country and wait a moment or two or a month or two or year or two and see if your part actually shows up. Nope, 99% of the parts necessary to restore this vehicle back to any kind of serviceable condition already exist on a shelf in a warehouse in Memphis, Tennessee, and will continue to exist 15 years after the end of production. Oh, one last tip I want to share with you in living with your Ford GT. If you, in fact, are going to track days and you are going to spend a lot of time out there having fun with it, we'd recommend that you go to Ford Racing and look out for their additional trans cooler that bolts right into this setup. So it will help protect that gearbox as well. Yeah, this is really the heart and soul of Ford GT. It's a very special car. Now let me show you a couple of detail issues up front. In living with your GT, there's other things you should be aware of right here underneath the front hood. There's a tray that we've talked about that contains the car cover, of course, and the air pump for the tires. But under that tray, which removes very easily, there's some other key maintenance details you should be aware of. Washer fluid, brake fluid, clutch fluid. I can see the ABS unit from here. Therein is the fuse panel and, of course, the battery. Should you ever have to jumpstart this vehicle, that's the location for it. Okay, there's a few details in living with your Ford GT. Now, we said right up front, this is a purpose-built machine, a surgical instrument, if you will, of high performance. To that end, we had the head aerodynamicist for this vehicle, Kent Harrison, on our show. It was a great interview. We had no idea the company had actually taken one of these vehicles, gone to the Nardo test track in Italy, a seven and a half mile oval, and averaged for 500 miles, 205 miles an hour, with some peaks in there of 212. This is a very quick car. You now own the fastest production Ford Motor Company product ever built. It is the Ford GT.